Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, both on live stream as well as uh, on our YouTube channel there. Wanted to bring in to you an update uh, of something that I've been watching for quite some time and finally have come to the conclusion why we're seeing so much massive troops by the United States as well as other countries, Germany, uh, and also um, uh, different countries inside of Europe that have been pouring troops and soldiers and equipment into Poland. And I have come to the conclusion that Kaliningrad is the reason for all of this. Kaliningrad has become Europe's Cuban crisis, Cuban missile crisis, uh, if you were. And that's what it's really coming down to me, as you can see here on the photo in the screen and behind you right here, Kaliningrad, that little tiny little tiny little province there inside of Europe, just south of Lithuania, uh, north of Poland there. This is where all the troubles are going on right now. And I'm going to share with you what some of the thoughts are that I have on this. Uh, those of you that know anything about the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, we know that President John F. Kennedy uh, stood up against uh, President uh, uh, Khrushchev of, of the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, about building nuclear ICBM missile bases inside of Cuba. This was after several attempts of the United States to try to overthrow Castro and had failed. And finally, Castro, reaching out to his Russian partner, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Khrushchev tried to uh, get some help and support of Russia with all the attacks that the U.S. had been doing on trying to overthrow Castro. And they started by building uh, what we see here on the map here on the screen here, an old map here, a uh, historic map that the United, States had taken, uh, the United States had taken pictures of different uh, places that they were building launch pad for ICBMs inside of Cuba to, for, for Castro to try to thwart what the U.S. was doing. According to the uh, report here, it says, after the failed U.S. attempt to overthrow Castro regime in Cuba with the Bay of Pigs invasion, while the Kennedy administration planned Operation Mongoose in July of 1962, Soviet Premier uh, Nikita Khrushchev reached a secret agreement with the Cuban uh, Premier Fidel Castro to place a Soviet nuclear missile in Cuba to deter any further invasion attempt. And of course, that really got things all stirred up there. And we know about the blockade. We know that uh, Kennedy made a huge stance and uh, brought about the blockade. Now, it seems like Obama has been pretty much setting the stage for the same situation in Kaliningrad. But you have to kind of ask yourself the question, what caused this crisis to begin with? Much like what we had uh, with the United States trying to topple uh, Fidel Castro back in the uh, late 50s and early 60s there, we've seen, again, the same situation that has created the Cuban crisis of today, the Kaliningrad crisis, we might call it, um, uh, because of a similar scenario. Russia says, according to this report here, back in June 15th of 2015, Russia says it will respond to U.S. military buildups in the Baltics. And it has been tit for tat. Of course, the Baltics was uh, built up because the United States uh, and their partners with the NATO allies decided that they would build up on Russia's border, saying Russia was aggressive with its actions inside of Ukraine. But in reality, it was Russia that was invited to Ukraine by former President uh, uh, um, Yanukovych in response to the uh, CIA-backed coup that was toppling the country to begin with. And, but nonetheless, it seems like Russia took the blame for it anyway. They take the blame pretty much for everything nowadays. So uh, in that response there, it was a false buildup, a false flag event that the U.S. began to build up in the Baltics. So Russia says it will respond to the U.S. military buildup in the Baltics, as we can see in this article here back in June. And it did exactly that. And in October uh, of 2015, Russia deployed nuclear-capable missiles in Kaliningrad. Uh, now, Kaliningrad is their own country, so it's not like Russia has to ask permission. But nonetheless, you want to talk about stir up a hornet's nest. 
That's exactly what it's done. Now, even though there have been more troops sent, more equipment, more tanks and everything into the Baltics, the majority of it has been sent to Poland. And that's what's really gotten my attention is asking myself the question, why Poland? Why are they all going to Poland? And also we see the, uh, the Ukraine passed a law that allows uh, foreign troops to do war games inside of their country. Now, no doubt NATO uh, is working very closely together to try to thwart any, any situation that might come in from the mainland Russia if indeed uh, the NATO partners decide to take out this little country called Kaliningrad because of all the nuclear warheads there. And, if, you know, I can certainly see the reason why NATO is overly concerned at this point, but NATO seems to forget, much like the Cuban Missile Crisis, it was created by the United States to start with. Unfortunately, and I don't say that Fidel Castro was a good guy by no means, uh, it was uh, very much a communistic nation. There were many Cubans that were fleeing the country because of the oppression. And so the United States began to intervene in Cuba as a result. But Fidel Castro got Russia to back him up as a result of their problems with the U.S. Now we see that Kaliningrad, uh, of course, that is a Soviet uh, Union province to begin with. But because of all the buildup of troops on its own borders, not seemingly not anything that the that the Russian Federation has done uh, to escalate the tensions there regarding Ukraine. That was more of an inside job to begin with. But nonetheless, it has built up. I believe that's what's going on in Poland, why we see all the troops there. And I have a feeling that President uh, Donald Trump isn't going to back down from this issue either. He's going to be another JFK. No doubt in behind the scenes, as they said about the Cuban Missile Crisis, a lot of the talks went on between the Kremlin and the White House. And I think that's what we're seeing again today. It'll be, uh, uh, once again, it'll be President Donald Trump with President Putin discussing this Kaliningrad crisis uh, that we have going on now. And no doubt Donald Trump will be trying to use this to his own advantage, a leverage there, but also at the same time letting uh, President uh, Putin know that unless these missiles are removed from uh, Kaliningrad, then there's definitely going to be war to be had. Uh, another interesting article about all this that kind of gives you a little synopsis of what happened to begin with is from Tyler Durden on Zero Hedge. It says He says back in November of 2008, then Russian President Dmitry Medvedev made a stark warning to NATO. Russia will deploy Eichlander missile systems in its enclave in Kaliningrad to neutralize, if necessary, the anti-ballistic missile system in Europe. Subsequent, uh, he says, we reported in 2013 that, a, that in seemingly escalation as the U.S. ballistic shield of Europe appeared on its way uh, to completion, there were unconfirmed reports that Russia had deployed a double-digit amount of SS-26 mobile units within Kaliningrad. Uh, east forward on this May, when a dramatic development for the global nuclear balance of power re reported that starting May 12th, the United States would launch its European missile defense system, dubbed Aegis Ashore, at a remote airbase in the town of Devolce, Romania. Almost a decade after Washington proposed uh, protecting NATO from Iranian rockets and despite uh, repeated Russian warnings that the West is threatening the peace in Central Europe, uh, as Robert Bell and NATO-based uh, envoy of U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter explained, we have we have uh, the capability to protect NATO in Europe. The Iranians are increasing their capabilities, and we have uh, to be ahead of that. Now, I think that's more or less bogus, if you ask me. Uh, they're much closer to Moscow than they are to Tehran. Anyway, uh, that's about the, my, uh, my take on this anyway. Uh, one other kind of new development as well, Israel. Um, Israel has developed its own Aero 3 missile defense system, uh, supposedly the most accurate and reliable defense shield in the world now. I uh, don't know how it compares up to the Russian S-300, S-400, but their system can go into, the, into space and knock out its target in space itself. So definitely a major step ahead for the Israeli uh, armed forces in developing this system. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.